I will fix this SMPS power supply used in the LED TV. The customer has tried to repair it, but they have not been able to repair it. Here, they have soldered a wire. The fuse was installed here. The fuse has been desoldered from this circuit board. This SMPS circuit is still dead and not working. In their place, lightning struck, and many things in his house got burnt. I will study this SMPS circuit and then fix it. This connector in this circuit is for the line and the neutral connections. I will see the circuit from the back side. The left trace is neutral, and the right trace is the line. The line passes through the fuse. An NTC sensor is installed with a neutral connection. The neutral is moving forward from it. A capacitor, which is a filtering capacitor, is installed next. These next two capacitors are also for filtration. A line filter is mounted next. These are pins of the line filter from the back side. Four diodes are installed next. These diodes are used to convert AC electricity to DC electricity. It means it is a bridge rectifier. When the AC electricity is converted to DC. Next, a bigger capacitor is used. The value of the capacitor is 400 volts and 47 microfarad. The capacitor is quite long. 300 volts should be on these capacitor pins. I will check the voltages here. Before explaining the next section of this SMPS circuit board. Over here, a heat sink is mounted on this circuit board. I think MOSFET is beneath it. I will remove this heat sink, which will make learning more about this circuit board easier. I will desolder it. I will desolder this MOSFET, too. The MOSFET has come out. Let me tell you what its number is. F5N60 is its number, which is an N-channel 5 ampere and 600 volt MOSFET. I see in the circuit board that the left pin is the source pin. The pin in the center is the drain pin. The pin on the right side is the gate pin. A diode is installed with the drain pin. Now, before desoldering it back on the circuit board, I will test whether it has any problem. If it is short-circuited, the multimeter will show it. Nothing is shown on the multimeter. I will change the polarity of the probes. I will attach the probes to test all three pins. I think it has no short in it. The value on the source and drain is 0.543 voltage drop, which means it is absolutely fine. Its next circuit is something like this. Few resistors, and then an IC is mounted over here. I will check what is its number. Next an optocoupler is installed. This optocoupler provides feedback on the low voltage side, I think this is a controller IC. 63933 is the number of this IC. This is a PWM controller IC, which is controlling this SMPS circuit. A transformer or a chopper is installed. In the circuit, it functions something like this. This is the positive trace moving directly towards the chopper. The negative in this circuit is passing through this MOSFET. This PWM IC passes signals onto the gate pin of the MOSFET, which turns it on and off and then the frequency is generated here. The voltages are produced on the other side of the chopper. And this is how this circuit board functions. I will check the main line and neutral connector on diode mode. The multimeter shows a short circuit on the display. The value is 0.10 on the multimeter. This short circuit means something is wrong on the high section of this circuit. I will check this NTC sensor. I will check its resistance value in ohm mode. The value of the NTC is 7.1 ohms. This means it is fine. The chances of the capacitor going bad in this circuit are less. At the same time, these two capacitors are grounded. Each is attached to the line and neutral. And its second pin is grounded. So, these capacitors have less chance of going bad. The line filter coil seems to be burnt. The coil on the left is okay. There is no chance that both these coils get in contact with each other. If they do, then the false reading due to it could have been shown on the connector. I will now check these diodes. I have set the multimeter on diode mode. First, I am checking the diode number 4. The voltage drop is 0 on the diode. The next diode also has 0 voltage drop. Let's see on this next diode. I will change the polarity of the probes to check the short circuit. The diode voltage drop is absolutely fine. In the same way, let's check this diode. This diode number 2 reading is also shown fine. The diode number 3 and 4 are short circuited. Now, if a bridge rectifier package is installed in the circuit, we remove and replace it with a new one. However, in such cases, where the bridge rectifier is made using diodes, the same as ours. Never replace the shorted diodes only. Replace all the diodes. Because the fine diodes could have minor leakage, which is shown to be okay on the multimeter. But when electricity is passed through these diodes, 
The new diodes may go faulty again due to those not being replaced. It is also possible that the problem in the circuit board starts to show, which was not present before. So, always change all four diodes together. I will remove these diodes from the circuit board. The number of the diode is RL207. I don't have the diode number I showed you that is installed on this circuit board. I will install a replacement for that diode. These are the four diodes I will install in the circuit. The number of the diode is 1N4007. This is 1 ampere and a 1000 volt diode. The diode number I showed you before is 2 amperes, but the voltage of this diode is also 1000 volts. This is also a general purpose diode. This diode is bigger in size because it can bear more current. These diodes will also work in this circuit board. Now, I will insert these diodes according to their marks on the circuit board. The diodes should be installed in the correct position. If any diode is installed in the wrong direction, it will be short-circuited. I am very careful with the position of the anode and cathode while installing these diodes. I have inserted all the diodes in the correct position. The anode is on the left, and the cathode is on the right on diodes number 1 and 2. The diodes number 3 and 4 cathode is on the left side, and the anode is on the right side. I will replace its line filter with a new one. I have these line filters with me right now. The line filter which was installed in this circuit is something like this. I have repaired the burnt coil, and I didn't have a line filter of this small size. That is the reason I have repaired it, off the camera. I have installed the line filter in the circuit board. I will recheck the reading on the connector. I have attached the probes with the connector pins. The multimeter is showing no value now. I will change the polarity of the probes and then check it. Still, no value is shown on the multimeter. This means the high side circuit of this SMPS has been fixed. As I have studied the high side of this SMPS, let's check the low side of this circuit as well. Let's see what is beneath this heat sink. Let me show you what is the number of the IC beneath the heat sink. The double diode mark is made on this IC. I have checked its datasheet. This is a 10 ampere Schottky barrier rectifier. I will pass electricity through the circuit board now. I will plug the wire. Right now, almost 12 volts are passing through the output of the SMPS. This SMPS circuit has been fixed. The final testing will be done on this LED TV. I will remove the screw of the LED TV. I have installed the SMPS in the LED TV, but I didn't see this before. When the customer gave me this LED TV, the SMPS was out of the TV. The display circuit board has been completely burned. The MCU has a hole in it, so its control circuit is damaged, but the SMPS has been fixed. I am tired now, and I run on coffee, so buy it for me on Patreon. Click the link on the screen to visit. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.